Hello, all. Welcome to BIM XT Network, the second event. My name is Dana DeFilippi, coming from my home office in Washington, D.C. For those of you who do not know me, I'm a BIM technologist at Smith Group, an advisor for the Revit DC user group, and a speaker at national conferences. First today, we have Andrew Watkins, the Director of Building Technologies at Design Collective. Hey, Andrew. How have you been spending the last few months at home in Baltimore, Maryland? Oh, it looks like Andrew is muted. Okay. There we go. I'm good. <laughs> uh, you know what? Um, <laughs> I, uh, it's interesting. I live about uh, a block and a half from my office, so and we actually never closed. But I have been working at home for the most part, um, and my wife and I both work at home, so uh, it's interesting sharing uh, sharing that broadband connection between us when we're both on Zoom calls. But uh, yeah, it's been fun, um, and we're you know being as productive almost as ever with you know even not being at the office. So it's a interesting new dynamic, isn't it? Absolutely. I think most of us on the call are used to having significant others or someone else in the background, a baby crying, right? So <laughs> no worries. We'll work with what we got. Yep. So what can you tell us about how teams at Design Collective have adapted in reviewing projects? Well, it's interesting. You, you, you have a couple of different reasons for uh, sharing a project virtually, whether it's uh, internally to mark up a set of drawings, whether it's uh, a presentation to uh, that you're preparing or a set of drawings that's about to go out for permit for quality control. Uh, then you also have, you know, just visualization that you're doing and looking at the design workflow or you're sharing it out to external sources for project approvals and design buy-in. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about both, but mostly focus on the preferred tools that we have been using for drawing markup. Um, so I'd if I could, I'd like you, if you could to pull up the uh, poll about you, people's favorite markup tools, and then I'm going to share my screen uh, to show a little bit about BIM 360 markup tools and Bluebeam Review Studio markup tools. So if you could, audience, go ahead and let us know what your favorite drawing markup tools are. We'll give you a few more seconds to respond, and then we'll actually share the poll with the audience as well, so you guys can see how everyone responded. So it looks like we're at about 25 seconds. Go ahead and end it and share the results. So very, very high number, about 75% Bluebeam, which I think cool. that's an industry standard, I'd say, right? I mean, I think with, within the office, outside of the office, uh, Bluebeam provides some really, really great functionality for us as AEC uh, practitioners. Yep. So I'm going to jump first be, before we jump into Bluebeam Studio, and I'm going to share a little bit, a few tips and tricks for that one. Um, hopefully a lot of people are using that already. Uh, but here we are in BIM 360, and um, I'm uh, guessing a lot of people have moved a lot of projects to the cloud as we all are remote. Please don't work on a project over a VPN hosted on your network. Please don't do that. That'll break everything. Um, but here we are. Here's the... Uh, um, markup tools for a sheet in BIM 360. And over here on the right side, you see a set of tools. And, you know, those of us that are used to either Adobe or Bluebeam, these are uh, a little bit lacking in what we uh, like to do and how we mark up. So you're, you know, you do a little sketch tool and you can kind of scribble or you can put a cloud around something and uh, put some text with it. But you know what, it's a little bit rudimentary. And I think uh, while yes, uh, this can be shared out to contractors, to clients, uh, or just your internal team, depending on your permission sets, uh, the, the markup tools within BIM 360 are not awesome in terms of drawing markup. Uh, and I most likely we've seen uh, Autodesk has definitely been making lots of changes. We might see a they name are, change, yes. <laughs> and, and, um, but and hopefully we'll like, see some more functionality. And yeah, we talked about that last time. Like every time you open BIM 360, there's a new thing that, that opens up, like the, uh, the schedule publish of drawings which uh, are, are models that uh, I didn't even know existed until uh, uh, that was brought up last time. So that's been fun. Um, 
But I, what I'd really do like is uh, the, the 3D markup tools and, and review capabilities. Um, super simple viewer, um, you know, easy to orbit, easy to drop a little guy in here, and then you go to uh, the Street View version. And it, you can use these same markup tools uh, right within uh, this viewer here. So um, you open your little markups panel on the left side, and you click on the markup, and it jumps right to it. And now I'm wondering why why do I have bronze glass in this uh, in this um, facade here? So that was an interesting um, uh, way to kind of pull up and, and question what's going on with the with the design at, at, at that current time. And you know, again, anybody who has access to your project can make these uh, different comments. So it's a great way to kind of track uh, versions and look at comments as they are progressing. But, and as someone who hasn't used this this side of BIM 360 docs. Uh, how do we get to this? Because once again, that, that website is so tricky, right? Yes, so if we're right. in the I'm web interface. Out of it. Go up to this little uh, nine square icon here and we're uh, at document management. And then uh, uh, document management and oh, now we're restarting. That's good. There we go. Always good for a refresh. Yeah. Go into your project folders, and depending on the, the model that you want to open, uh, you just select the uh, the discipline. That's how we break up the models into different folders, and then just select the model that you want to open, and up comes the uh, either your 2D views that you have published out or your 3D model view. Look at all those fun 3D level lines that are cropping up now. And it publishes. It's uh, you know this is a, a, a 500 gigabyte uh, megabyte model, so it's a pretty significant model. Uh, but it it you know publishes out in a and opens up in the viewer pretty quickly. And this is uh, looks like we have a few questions coming in. In particular, uh, the web version of BIM 360 documents. That's where we only see the published model, right? So you need to publish your model if you want to see the latest and greatest to be that able to correct. mark it up. Correct. That is correct. Awesome. Uh, and Fun side fact, you can see all of the versions of that model and you can definitely open up different uh, past versions or future versions and look at and compare the changes between the two. Um, not going to demonstrate all that right now, but uh, it, it is a good way to track how the model history over time. Can we save 3D views from the Revit model and have them available here to to be viewed? So if we wanted specific areas, maybe lobbies or what have you that we're coordinating in. Yep, can you definitely can. Crop those and up you, or... just, you add those to the to the views that you want to publish. So you can publish any sheets, any views from your model from your project browser, and they will appear here for uh, public consumption. That's fantastic. And like you said, Andrew, this is something that a lot of us have, if not within you know the last year, definitely within the last three to six months, we're already using this platform. So if we can have it all integrated, definitely with the permissions are already set up and all of that good stuff, why not? Right, right. So uh, as I said, the, it's a, a great tool. Uh, it, it does have some of its limitations, especially from the, the, the AEC uh, markup and review standpoints that, uh, you know, just tool, tool parts that we're used to, to using. You know, things like the ability to save uh, comments as a, as a tool set that you use frequently, um, you know, like when, when you're doing a punch list or something like that. Um, things that Bluebeam has built into it. So uh, if it's okay, I'm going to switch over to, to Bluebeam. And uh, it is here somewhere. While you do that, it looks like we're up to about 90 plus people. So I just want to see where everyone is coming from today. So if you could go ahead in that poll, hopefully in front of you, let us know where you're coming from. Oh, I like seeing the numbers on Washington, D.C. go up. We didn't have any last time. This is awesome. We'll give you a few more seconds on that. I think some people just put Washington, D.C. to appease me. It just shot up. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So we'll share the results here. Looks like we have the majority in uh, Maryland, Virginia, and North Carolina, but definitely some some representation in even Pennsylvania, uh, Washington, D.C., South Carolina, and some other states not listed. So we'd love to see that in the chat, where you're coming from outside of the USA or outside of the state listed. We'd love to see where you guys are coming from. So 
thank you guys so much. And who is outside the U.S.? I know. I want two people. Look yeah, at that. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. All right. So Blue Beam. Blue Beam is yeah, definitely, so, as we saw, 75%, three quarters of us are yep. in there using that. So real quickly, uh, I'm in Blue, Blue Beam Studio. Uh, That's the little uh, house icon over here. And uh, there's a difference between projects and sessions. Projects, it's one person marking up at a time. Sessions is multiple people marking up at a time. That's the simplest clarification between the two. Uh, and what I love about sessions is I can invite up to 500 people to mark up something at once. And you get this sort of stream of consciousness of what is happening, who is marking up what and when. And uh, so you really can see, A, who's in it at, at the current time, and B, what they have marked up and what they have looked at uh, as they've gone through. So, um, and then you can also, let's just jump to something. This is also an interface, just like BIM 360, where I'm, I haven't had much in, you know, interface with Bluebeam, but there's so many buttons in here. There are a lot of <laughs> uh, so icons to get used to. Icons. <laughs> Yeah, a little overwhelming um, to be honest. <laughs> so here you see I, I've dropped a cloud on here, pretty simple. And uh, what I love about it is I can uh, set the uh, status of it. So if you hop down here and set status, and we've got our own standards. So if I hit, hit complete, I've uh, I've picked that up. It changes color, and it's just a quickly quick uh, visual um, reminder that this is something that either still needs to be done or is already completed and uh, is ready to go. Uh, you can also, if there are more uh, multiple people involved in this markup, I can right-click that and share the uh, comment with an outside person. They will get an email, and they will get it, a, a hyperlink right to that specific comment in the document, so they can they don't have to sort through the document to find that specific comment. I love that feature. Just takes them right to it, right? Check your spelling. Yeah. I know that they. I would probably get comments like that to check. Oh yeah, spelling. it's all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm just going to share a couple of trips and tip, uh, tips and tricks for uh, for this. I love these uh, keyboard shortcuts. Um, it, again, not a feature in BIM 360, um, but if I just uh, quickly grab that and I'll make a paste of it and move that around. Love doing that stuff, but you know, A or C or K, these quick single letter uh, shortcuts lets me do a T for text box, and here we go. Oh, so you don't have to use the buttons. That makes text it wonderful. Box, boom. And now if I hit Alt-Z, that automatically sizes the text box right down to the text that you have typed. So it, it auto-sizes your, your text box. So um, lots of fun stuff like that, and, uh, you know, it's makes it fit on the screen a little better so you don't have giant boxes with just one line of text. Amazing. So tip. really cool stuff there. Um, you can also export 3D PDFs from Revit or whatever your tool of choice is. Uh, and then you can spin around and mark those up in Bluebeam. Uh, it's a little bit of a heavy file format where BIM 360 handles that much better. So it kind of depends and what you're you doing. Do you use the, the Bluebeam add-in within Revit to create the 3D PDF? You do, yes. And I, I use that all the time for printing just because you have much better control over file naming and, and uh, things like that. I know users within Smith Group, especially before the collaboration tools within uh, BIM 360, at least before we were utilizing them, loved the 3D PDFs. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And they can be embedded in, in uh, PowerPoints or InDesign documents. There, there are lots of uses for those things. Looks like Dan Warren has a question about whether you leverage the sets tool within your Bluebeam projects. Uh, a lot of my users do. They definitely uh, have sets. They have bookmarks. They sort them into disciplines. Um, so yeah, it, it, we don't have a, a set way to use it. It's more about um, how different project managers have preferences, and some are very uh, persnickety in how they um, have their sets uh, set up, and, and others are, are much less so. <laughs> One of the amazing things that I've done with Bluebeam is um, creating a multi-page PDF from Revit and then using the bookmarks to basically uh, separate the pages, and it 
creates such wonderful naming within those yes. PDFs, yes. right? Love it. Yeah, here I'll uh, share that for everybody. So here's our Revit add-in. And here we got the Bluebeam add-in for Revit. And you see there the Create 3D PDF right next to it. Yep, right there. Over here is the Bookmarks tab. And if I just click that for drawing, and uh, I, it will now just name all of your sheets by the drawing name. Uh, so you don't have to do any renaming later in, in Bluebeam, although that's really easy too. But uh, So that's a super uh, useful feature as well. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Andrew. Any final thoughts about how um, the, uh, your firm has, has changed in terms of reviewing projects and collaborating? Uh, yeah, I just I wanted to touch on VR just a little bit, uh, oh, not to uh, not to do a huge diversion, but um, we re we've been using a tool called Iris VR. I don't know if anybody else is using that at all, but um, it's pretty cool in that it lets you uh, export a model like this out to the cloud, and then it you can invite other users into it. So you do a, effectively a multi-user VR review. So you get a little avatar. You're all standing around the model or inside the model, depending, and you're all looking at the same thing. You can uh, divert people's attention right to a specific thing to look at. And uh, it's, it really has become a great design collaboration tool, uh, especially for, you know, all of us, you know, web designers in Chicago and, and uh, clients in Florida. And, you know, it becomes a great way to, you know, especially with Oculus Quest uh, now being able to handle these models um, becomes a, a really a fairly cost effective way to do it. Absolutely. Iris has been around for a while. They're, <clears throat> excuse me, always at our conferences. You can get them to come over and give you demos. So definitely recommend that. Right. There's also a few other companies, uh, Yulio, The Wild. So this is definitely becoming a trend with right. VR and having this um, conference room style setup where everybody can collaborate within a VR experience together. So absolutely, right. Right. definitely great tip. Yeah, there's a, there's one called Spatial, which is doesn't even it's not even dedicated to architecture or models, but it's as, as if your uh, avatar is in a conference room, and you you can have a whiteboard, or you can throw images up on the on a VR wall, uh, add augmented reality components to it. Uh, Some I commenting know that is, tools. Yes, that is free right now. Uh, I'm sure that will not be the case for a long time. <laughs> they want to sell you on it, right? Absolutely. Make it a must-have, and then they want to charge you for it. Yeah. Absolutely. Per usual.